So now that we have a small function that renames a mesh, um, I wonder how we could make that function into a reusable tool that we can use in the 3D viewport without actually having to run a Python script. Um, to do that, we might want to mimic the way tools work in Blender in general. Uh, those tools are called operators. Um, and um, basically, they operate under context. For instance, if I select or, or you know, an object, it becomes the active object. And if I hit tab or go into edit mode, uh, the operator runs on that particular object. So the operator runs on the active object, even as I pull the 3D he header down, you can see that it doesn't actually say, oh, I'm going to run on the active object. It just grabs the context when it runs. So bpy.ops, this is the operators, and this is the object operators, edit mode toggle, just gets whatever active object you have from the context so it knows which particular object to toggle. And you can actually do that here just by typing out the same operator and it toggles edit mode and run it again and we're back in object mode. And you notice that it spits out a value down at the bottom here. So first of all, how do we get that value um, returned to us here, right? So when I um, do from rename import rename dot pi whoops sorry import rename selected there we go um, and I do rename selected um, and I'll give it a name uh, test notice nothing gets printed back here right <laughs> And if you look at the way our function is defined, that should be kind of obvious, right? There's, it just changes the name of the object. There's nothing else happening. So how do you actually get a function to sort of return a value back, right? And so that's pretty easy to do. Uh, that's done with something called a return statement. So uh, the next thing that functions can do other than do something is that they can return a value. Um, and we've seen that before, for instance, when we did sign of, uh, sign of a number and we got the sign of that number back, right? So we can do that again here, or if we ran random, we got a random number back. So how do you return a make a function that returns something? So let's, let's write a trivial one, right? Def, so this is defining a function, and I'm call it echo back, and this is just going to echo back whatever you get, so x. So that will just take um, take a take a value in and it's just going to echo it back. So I'm going to write return x. This is a perfectly valid, valid function. So if I write echo back test, I get back test. Echo back um, hey, and so on and so forth, and I can send it a number, like an integer for instance, and so on and so forth, and that all works. So all this does is it gives the value back to the caller. So I can also write something like this, a equals echo back 121, okay that's fine, and if I type a, it's got the value 21 in it. So this is a very trivial kind of example but at least that's introduced to us a new element, which is this return uh, return statement. So that happens inside a function, and it causes the function to exit and return a value to the caller of the function. So that's kind of uh, useful. Um, and that's probably, we can guess, somehow how we're getting this finished back from our operator. Now we need to get a finish back from the operator because Blender insists on it. If you don't get it back, it considers that to be an error because it doesn't know that the operator finished. So that is uh, 
that is a, a you know a, an, another thing that we can add to our functions um, another thing that we can add is some documentation right so you can say um, uh, it would be nice to be able to write a little comment in your file to help you uh, know what it's doing so you can write something like um, several ways to do documentation for instance after the function define you can put a, a triple quoted string like so and you can use single quotes or double quotes here and you can type out uh, rename selected object 2x string x for instance right that's called a doc string in this case when it's right after a function call and you can say after here for instance we can add a an inline comment which is just with a pound uh, key uh, where you write uh, change the object name for instance that's a comment so this is a nice way to document your code is to write comments especially where you have something that you uh, have a hard time understanding or it might need explaining a little bit so we have commenting and returns and the final thing is to um, think of a, an if statement um, so sometimes you want to run things conditionally you don't want to have them happen all the time and the way to do that is to use an if statement so if is testing the truth or false of something so let's say you want to say uh, so let's let's have a look at this guy um, so so you can say if uh, type or if you you can you can do this so if uh, context so just use the C um, convenience variable here if C the object dot type equals to mesh colon print it's a mesh oh actually it's a mesh so I I had to use a double quote since I'm using a single quote inside the string so right so basically the active object is a mesh. So this equals equals operator is like, is it equal to? So, and that returns a true or a false. So I can also type, just to test that out. And that's true. Now, if for instance, I add a, let's add a, uh, an empty and try running this again. And we get a false. And if you run our if statement again, I can now do this. I can do else print c dot object dot type. So this is an else statement, and it's actually an empty. So let's have a look at this so first you have the if statement and then you have a condition that has to evaluate to uh, something that can be interpreted as true or false right so you can also write if true and that will also always evaluate to true so the true or false are booleans and they're written with a capital T and a capital F followed by a colon and like every case where you have a colon like define or a for loop the next everything that's within that scope has to be indented in. So we have an indented block where we do stuff that happens only if the condition is true. Here we just printed that it's a mesh. And then we optionally can write an else statement at the same level of indentation as the if, also with a colon. And here we can write some specific code that only runs if the condition is false. So that's an if then statement. So the final bit of uh, theoretical concept that I'm going to introduce in this section before we go on to writing our tool is the concept of a class. So if we can imagine that I am a person, so I'm of a class human, I can define a class 
So let's say class human, like so. And I'm going to, by convention, we'll just start it with a capital H to indicate that it's a class of things. So now I'm in, inside the class human, and I can write something like uh, define a function that is uh, something that a human being does. So I can write def and we'll do eat and here's the first special bit of uh, bit of notation that we'll show. I'm gonna write the word self. I won't explain it here but it's uh, just to say briefly that it refers to a member of this you know the actual thing that is eating the object of the class and then here I'm gonna write uh, food stuff as, a, as an argument colon and I'm just going to say print I'm eating comma food stuff right so this is my very very simple class so now that it's done I can write Bassam equals to human and what that does is that it actually creates a human object. So if I do type the sum, you can see that it is a human type object. The underscore main refers to the fact that it's defined in the same context that we're running right now. We're running inside the thing where it's defined right here. So now I can say the sum dot eat. And this is where that self comes in. Self is like a dummy argument that actually refers to the uh, owner of eating. So I have added eating as a thing, as a method in this class that all class things can eat. And I have to give it uh, a food to eat. So I'm going to eat a um, french fry. Well, let's make it plural just to make it nicer and it says that I'm eating french fries which I'm not but anyway that's a really trivial way to define a class um, so class can have um, so Basam is an object and it's a member of a class and actually everything in Python is a member of a class like if you do type um, 30 you can see that it's an object of class int and it has uh, attributes as being a member of that class. You can specify um, class attributes as well as uh, class methods. Um, so um, if I say a equals to 30, we need this for uh, syntactical reasons. I can do a dot uh, bit length um, and I, you know, it's just a function. I don't even know what this function is supposed to do. Um, it's number of bits necessary to represent the number in binary. So this would take five bits to represent the number 30 in binary, which makes sense since 32 is 2 to the power of 5. Um, so in any case, so even an integer is actually an object that belongs to a class, and that's actually true of everything in Python. Um, so uh, everything is basically an object um, and um, we'll see next that when we go to define ourselves an operator, uh, we have to create um, a class for it. Um, uh, and that's the way that Blender will know to um, use that operator in the next section.